I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell of your name to my kin. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. My dear brothers and sisters, we are almost uh, towards the end of our Easter tide season. We still have another week to go uh, as we prepare for the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. We prepare too to see our Lord Jesus go in glory and prepare ourselves one day for when he returns. More of that later. As we then come before God as an Easter people, those who celebrate the resurrection of Christ in our lives day by day. Let us pause at this time as we gather in his name and offer to him those times we have fallen away from the resurrection and ask for his mercy and forgiveness. You raise the dead to life in the spirit, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You make one by your spirit the torn and divided, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And so let's pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, that as we celebrate in mystery the solemnities of your Son's resurrection, so too we may be worthy to rejoice at his coming with all the saints. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we continue reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul's escort took him as far as Athens and went back with, his, with instructions for Silas and Timothy to rejo rejoin Paul as soon as they could. Paul stood before the whole council of the Areopagus and made this speech. Men of Athens, I have seen for myself how extremely scrupulous you are in all religious matters because I noticed as I strolled around admiring your sacred monuments that you had an altar inscribed to an unknown God. Well, the God whom I proclaim is in fact the one whom you already worship without knowing it. Since the God who made the world and everything in it is, is himself Lord of heaven and earth, he does not make his home in shrines made by human hands, nor is he dependent on anything that human hands could do for him, since he can never be in need of anything. On the contrary, it is he who forgives everything, including life and breath, to everyone. From one single stock, he not only created the whole human race so that they could occupy the entire earth, but he decreed how long each nation should flourish and what the boundaries of its territory should be. And he did this so that all the nations might seek the deity, by feeling their way towards him, succeed in finding him. Yet in fact, he is not far from any of us, since it is in him that we live and move and exist, as indeed some of your own writers have said, we are all his children. Since we are the children of God, we have no excuse for thinking that the deity looks like anything in gold, silver or stone that has been carved and designed by people. God overlooked that sort of thing when men were ignorant. But now he is telling everyone everywhere that they must repent because he has fixed a day when the whole world will be judged and judged in righteousness. And he has appointed a man to be the judge. And God has publicly proved this by raising this man from the dead. With this mention of rising from the dead, some of them burst out laughing. Others said, We'd like to hear you talk about this again. After that Paul left them, but there were some who attached themselves to him and became believers. Among them Dionysus the Areopagite, and a woman called Tamaris, and others besides. After this Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response your glory fills all heaven and earth. 
your glory fills all heaven and earth. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights. Praise him all the angels, praise him all his host. Your glory fills all heaven and earth. All earths, kings and peoples, earths, princes and rulers, young and old, together with children. Your glory fills all heaven and earth. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he alone is exalted. The splendour of his name reaches beyond heaven and earth. Your glory fills all heaven and earth. He exalts the strength of his peoples. He is the praise of all his saints, of the sons of Israel, of the people to whom he comes close. Your glory fills all heaven and earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must not look not for the things that are in heaven where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you, and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but they, they will be too much for you now. For when the Spirit of truth comes, he will lead you to complete truth since he will not be speaking as for himself, but will say only what he has learned, and he will tell you of the things to come. He will glorify me, since all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. Everything the Father has is mine. That is why I said, all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's uh, an extraordinary reading for the Acts of the Apostles today. We've leapt right on in the story now, and we are into the uh, the first great missions of uh, Paul, who is going out uh, across the Mediterranean uh, and is taking the knowledge of Jesus to those places which are picking him up in small groups and have said, "You know, come along, Paul. I want you to turn up, and can you can you can you help us? We've heard you're the one. You've got uh, a knack." You've got the skill, you've got the confidence to to to, to inspire. Um, and Paul arrives, I love the way he arrives, uh, obviously he's uh, sponsored by Ford at this point because he arrives in his escort. Oh, that's the old one, never mind. <laughs> he arrives in Athens, which is, of course, a great cultural city. We know about the Greek Empire and the Romans have modelled themselves on the Greek Empire. We know about the great influence of Greece that Alexander is. He appears in the Old Testament. Um, you know that he's moved through the uh, what we call the Middle East, uh, almost to India, uh, and and uh, we know that. So, so to go to Athens is very important. It's a, one of the major cities. Now I don't know if you've been to Athens. Um, I, I I went to Athens and uh, uh, and by luck had a whole day in the city. I was only changing planes, but because of an industrial dispute in uh, Sydney, uh, we were st I was stuck in Athens for I think 36 hours and uh, put up in a hotel and with a group of us we went off exploring the city. Um, wonderful, it's massive, absolutely massive. It was the middle of December we had the Acropolis, uh, only about a handful of us were up there to be able to look at it at the time, um, whistle stop tour. But I do remember uh, afterwards going down we got lost in the streets of Athens absolutely lost there were four of us I mean we didn't know where we we're going it, it is a bewildering place and uh, we stumbled across a restaurant which wasn't quite yet open and fortunately the two of them in our little group were English Cypriots <laughs> were they? and could speak Greek and started talking to the owners of the restaurant before we knew it we were sat down having, having a drink and they gave us some food it was all one it's like a family we never met <laughs> And before, and then a cousin collected us and drove us all the way across the city, back to Press, back to uh, where the hotel was. An extraordinary experience. It is a massive city. It is a chaotic city. How often we get the feeling in the Acts of the Apostles is a, it, it, it's 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 a bit more earthy in what happens in the Acts of the Apostles, and almost like the Gospels. Sometimes the Gospels, because we're thinking about Jesus all the time, are centred on him quite rightly so. 
we have this figure of Jesus that moves around and, and does extraordinary things because he is God. He can do it. And he does it in settings which are familiar amongst people that are familiar, the people of Israel, the Jews, the Romans, Samaritans, you know, those around. We, we, we know, we understand, they're part of what we know. But when we hear of Paul's travels, we go to places which are new, Athens, Corinth. And we encounter civilizations for us which are different, and so does Paul. The reason all of this is in the Acts of the Apostles, though, is because it, is the, it really is the part where the gospel actually comes alive. It's a way that the gospel, from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, of course, Luke's gospel, which is the predis, uh, predecessor to this. You know, this is Jesus, and we know this, it is giving us the story of. Uh, the account of why God came in, in Christ and why he went to the cross and the result, which is the resurrection. But in the Acts of the Apostles, which we read all the way through Eastertide, of course, we see the resurrection being revealed in people's lives, in their homes, in their places. And I love the way that here in, in this in the reading today, Paul arrives in his Ford Escort, <laughs> in Athens and the first thing he does is go and have a look there's a good wander around he takes in his, his surroundings one of the wonderful um, privileges of being a priest not at the moment of course because I can't do it but it's when I come to people's houses when I'm invited in or when I get them to invite me if I turn up at the door. And I may have been to some of your houses, if not not yet. And when you go into someone's house, and if for the first time, you look around and you look at the pictures on the walls and the knickknacks and the ornaments, you know. Where, where, did, where did I get, oh, wrong way around. Where did I get that from? Where did I get that from? Where did this picture come from? What's the story behind this? You know, these are just religious objects. But you go into a house and you see people's photos on the walls and their histories. And it's a privilege to see these and ask, who's that? Who are the kids there? And what's happening there? Was that a wedding? Was that a graduation? And the stories come out. And one of the privileges and the joys as a priest is to see in those pictures and these smiling faces or that God is at work that his, his love is being revealed in families God isn't just confined to the church the church buildings or anything through the gate he's not confined to your screen is not confined to those moments of prayer. It's actually working gently through everything. Whether you fell in love, whether you've been helped, whether the kindness has been shown or you felt emboldened to show the kindness, God is at work. So when people come for marriage, not very often here in the city, when they do, you know, they say, I want to get married. And I say, fantastic. Of course, you realise that God has been at work. When people ask for their child to be baptised, of course, they've realised that God wants the child baptised. And that's a wonderful moment. So here, Paul goes to the home. He goes to Athens. He goes to where these people live. And the first thing he does is take in where they are. He starts to understand them, to try and understand how they think and what the way they think. And uh, being Greek, about two years ago, I'm on Sunday, remember? I said, are you Greek? We are Greeks. We think like Greeks. We're logical people. We like a little bit of logic. And here it is. Paul says, hang on, I spotted an unknown altar to an unknown God. A just in case that's very familiar. A just-in-case God. All else fails. 
There's that shrine over there. We'll give that one a blast, just in case. You see, I spotted this. But the reality is, the just in case has always been there. In your photos, in your lives, in the experiences you've had, in you listening to me now, he said. Your curiosity has brought you to me because the Holy Spirit is at work. So he says, you know, that this God, this just in case God that you've always had tucked away in case, has always been with you and is always with you. And unlike the others who live up on mountains and play with the people, if you remember all the Greek myths and the Roman myths of the gods, God, the real God, the God, not the pretend ones, the God, has always been there but the shrine isn't in a wall it's in you and always has been and is in each and every one of you and will be in each and every one of those that are born into the world from this time to the coming of Christ hmm. now you see to the Greeks that's quite important he's understood where they're at he knows the Athenians like a good old logical debate they like to chew it over they're different. And of course, there's a reality to the Acts of the Apostles. There's an earthiness, as I said earlier on, slightly different maybe from the Gospels. There's an earthiness and there's a realism, a reality. It says, look, they all heard him. Some of them go, <laughs> you off your rocker, mate. Nonsense. Nonsense. Some went, hang on. It feels right. I'm not sure why. Because this God is not just in case God then. He is the one who is encased, who is within us. I hadn't realised. Maybe I am. Help me find out. Paul, more than anyone else, gets gets the resurrection in a different way. Paul gets Jesus in a personal way and understands that God, Jesus, is within us working. And of course, in a week's time, we encounter the Holy Spirit. And we will see how the Spirit works within us. So the resurrection has taken us through many, many ways over these last weeks. We've gone through realisation, we've gone through learning, we've gone through understanding why it was always going to happen, and now in these last few days, the resurrection is planted deep within us. It makes us what we are. When we need God, we don't need to go somewhere to find him. He's already there. The shrine is within you. We only need to talk to him because he's already listening before you even uttered the words. So let us offer our lives to God in prayer and we pray for those at this time who are struggling with fear and worry and concern throughout this virus, the outbreak of virus in this land. We pray for all those who are tending the sick, for those who are looking after the fragile and the weak, for all in our health and social and care services. We pray for all who are bringing our daily needs, our food, our well-being. We pray for those making decisions for our future. pray for all throughout the world who are living under the cloud of this disease and for the cooperation of nations in seeking cure, in seeking medicine, in 
seeking ways forward. We pray for all we know who ask for our prayers, all on our parish sick list, for those we know who are feeling fragile and weak at this time. And we pray for all who have gone before, that they may come before Christ and feel the warmth and wonder of paradise beyond. We gather our prayers with all our fellow brothers and sisters and all who turn to God in the world and pray to him with confidence in our hearts. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness of this bread to offer, which earth has given in human hands and made, till it become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness have this wine to offer, fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it can become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear friends in Christ, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this, the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. For this in memory of me.
complete is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Bartholomew, Mark, and Mary of the Cross, and with all the saints, on whose constant prayer in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servants Jonathan, Robert, Nick, our bishops, your clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleased to their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we have the confidence to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. I have chosen you for the world, says the Lord, and appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Hallelujah. Let us pray. 
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have been imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May the risen Christ grant you holiness to follow him with faith, hope, and love, and the bless blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.